Somebody else just pop on? No, it's recording. Perfect. We can start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good evening and welcome to the December 7th school board meeting. Uh, let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I just want to say amen. Uh, and our first agenda item, it will be the public input statement read by our vice chair. One more, more. Okay. The first public input session is a 21 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. But a second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. Each speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive censor sessions, for example, matters involving personnel, cannot be made during public input. We, as a community, pledge to treat each other as we wish to be treated. We pledge to seek understanding when there may be disagreement. Regardless of outcomes or opinions, we pledge to move forward with respect. This is a time for comments as opposed to a time for questions. Thank you. Uh, do we have any public input at this time? Um, Hi, I'm Jeremy Caston, Berwick. I just uh, wanted to say that I'm aware, as I'm sure you're all aware, that uh, our Milton cell teacher has, um, has left mid-year, and I'm sure that there's a procedure and a process to hiring somebody new, and uh, I hope that we can do that as quickly as possible. It's, you know, I'm sure it's not easy. It's a special specialty hire. Um, but uh, it's very important. This morning, uh, I got my, uh, my fifth and uh, fourth grader out of bed, uh, which is challenging sometimes uh, on a Thursday uh, when it's cold by reminding them that they, that they would see Ms. Sahagia today. And um, they both got right out of bed. Uh, so I'm thrilled that at least temporarily she's filling in. And, uh, very, we're all very appreciative for it, but we, we hope that um, we're, we're all working hard to fill that position and uh, say thank you. Thank you. Do we have any, any other public input at this time? My name is Dennis Duncan. and I'm a resident chair of North Berwick. And I come here on behalf of my grandson and my daughter-in-law, who's dealt very unfairly from the middle school. And it's an emotional thing to see a little kid with autism being left out. I think that they used to say there was no child left behind. If I remember right, some statesman politician said that. He's being left behind, and he's so hurt and disgusted. He's staying home. He's, he's just definitely afraid of the school system. And I'm sick and tired of having to run around and try and defend, in other words, the people who have tried to help him out. I've talked with ones on the phone. I've talked with Mrs. Samson, Heidi Samson, and different ones. First thing they asked is, he been diagnosed with autism? And I said, yes. And why the middle school didn't? keep him out from the mainstream student class. And he was in there. I know he was just holding his breath from anger, intimidation, frustration, whatever goes through a child's mind. He's 13 years old. He would have been a prime suspect of bullying if he'd stayed in that school. So that's one good. Why they didn't put him in a place with other kids with the same problem, I don't know. 
Now, the worst of it was, whoever the principal is in there, she told me his name. He knows who he is. He said, because of the child's not going to school every day, and we're going to bring North River Police Department, and we're going to be bringing in DHSS. She just about cried when she told me that. I said, that's over the top. I'll make it to the next meeting, and you people need to know that there's something wrong. That's my statement for tonight. Do we have additional public input? Uh, we'll move on to the minutes of the November 16th meeting. I have two um, edits that um, Jerry gave me one and Josh, so I'm gonna put those in. Um, I won't read them out loud right now because it was just a little, they're a little bit longer, but I think we had, one was a clarification regarding the bullying conversation and one was specific to the testing piece. So I'm going to utilize that language if they share. And is there anything else? So are we, are you going to do that so we can do you, okay. them now or later? If you're comfortable with the edits. Okay. Motion to approve with the edits. Okay. Yeah, so All right. That Josh sent his to the whole group. So okay. you have time to do that right now. Yes. Okay. Mr. Tabor's name will be correctly, Mr. Tabor. In the <laughs> <laughs> Being on an iPad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> so I make that motion. We have a motion to uh, accept uh, the minutes as amended. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? I abstain. I also abstain. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for doing that. Second abstention. Oh, Victoria. Travis and yeah. And uh, the next item of, uh, on the agenda is a donation uh, funds of nights. Yes. Travis, can you hear us okay? That's not a good yes, sign. Yes, I can hear you perfectly fine. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so we have received a donation of $11,747.36 from the Knights, from the Friends of Knights Lacrosse. Um, they're disbanding that group and they have made the donation to our six to 12 programs in the in the district. So both the, the girls lacrosse and the boys lacrosse, middle school and high school. Um, because it's over a certain amount of money, the board does need to make a motion to accept this donation. What was the amount again, 11? $11,747.36. Thanks. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept that donation. Okay. I'll second. second. Victoria? Can you just clarify for me, like, like what, what is it exactly? I don't, I didn't quite understand. I didn't quite pick up sure. how that money, so, why that money's being donated. It's, it's the Friends of the Knights Lacrosse. So it's the feeder, one of the feeder programs. They've raised money. Okay. And so they're disbanding their group. So they are dispersing their money to the schools to use for our lacrosse programs. So that's, it will go for yes. lacrosse. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so it's not general programs, it's, it's lacrosse, lacrosse programs. Six to yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that, um, is that, is this typical? Is this typical for outside groups to do fundraising and donations to the school district for specific? We've had some in the past. Yeah, we have. When an organization like that closes, but they have to have bylaws that say what happens to the money that's come to them as donations if they shut the organization down. So this is probably what they had designated for their plan to disperse. The class here is on do an art, yes, whole art thing, and specifically raise the funds to donate to the art. I think even specific grade level and school and art program. So, thank you for the clarification. So we've had the motion, and it has been seconded. All in favor? Okay. Opposed? Travis said yes. Thank you. Good. Uh, next is Sheriff Bill King, SRO Lebanon. Okay. Great. Welcome. So, <laughs> yeah, thank you. So just before I mean, speak, uh, in my past life, I was a teacher. And I know teachers like to pass things up. <laughs> <laughs> but because I was a teacher, I'm not going to give it to anyone until I finish speaking. And my business card is... Good, good idea. <laughs> I you both, my dad is going to be to you. But um, you know, we're, we're talking today, and what that handout is, it's, it's from uh, 
the first couple of pages of, from the NASDRO booklet, National Association of School Resource Officers. Now, I know this group believes in the school resource program. Uh, I'm not going to belabor that. That's going to be my deputy, Rob Pelican, is going to talk a little bit about uh, some anecdotal uh, evidence of how beneficial an SRO is. Uh, and you folks are considering an SRO for Lebanon. And I just highly recommend it. I am really hopeful that you agree with us that an SRO is needed for Lebanon. It's an isolated school. There's a high volume of, of calls. And frankly, it um, just I want to give you a little example. We, the sheriff's office, through a call share agreement, it used to be the state police, but then we've switched. Now we have primary jurisdiction for Lebanon. Um, in 2023, the year's not over yet. We've handled 91 disturbances. DHHS referrals, 14. Motor vehicle stops, wait for it, 553. And remember, you need to have a reason to stop a motor vehicle. So it's a suspicious activity. Again, many, most of the time it turns out to be nothing, but it was enough that prompted somebody to call 119 times. So we've got a school up there that's completely isolated. Lebanon needs dedicated police services. Um, unfortunately, right now the, the Lebanon Select Board doesn't have an appetite to hire a, a dedicated uh, deputy which many other seven other communities do in your county. Um, but I think, and, and what happens is, is that anytime the police are in Lebanon, it's something bad. Somebody's getting arrested, there's a disturbance, there's a crash, and this is what the children are seeing. Now, the SRO will have an opportunity to provide that positive, that positive influence. They're gonna be able to talk to an officer when the office is not like rushing to a call, but he's actually going to have time to have some type of interaction. And again, my experience with SRO is kind of from the management point. I'm Rob Pellegrin has 16 years as an SRO. So that's why I'm smart enough to say I'm going to give it to the expert. <laughs> I'm just going to interrupt for a second. Just so just for background for the board and for other folks <laughs> here, um, we were talking about the SRO piece. We've been talking about it for a while. Brandy is in the back of the room over there. She's Brandy Berger. She is one of our residents in Lebanon who's also asked us to explore the options. We have SROs in our other two towns, Berwick and North Berwick, that hasn't been something that we've been able to do here in the Lebanon schools. Um, what Bill says is true. Like there is not law enforcement in Lebanon. Um, there's been some significant concerns just in terms of um, safety factors, especially with the way that, you know, things have been playing out in the world these days. The other thing is, is we have the opportunity with the COPS grant to be able to um, utilize some funds. If, if we were accepted, if the, if the award was given to us, then we would work with these guys. And there, you, this is just one of your places, right? You're looking at um, SRO grants in other areas as well. Um, this presentation is really about whether or not we can support um, buying into this grant because there is some funding that's available to support this, but there's also a buy-in from the district as well. So I just want to be clear about that piece of it. That's why the presentation is here for you. Thank you. I left out the most important part. Oh, it's okay. It's just, you know. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. we did get a grant. You know, it's uh, it's $125,000 spread out over three years. So it's about $42,000 a year that will supplement the SRO in Lebanon. So that's another reason why we're here and we're certainly hopeful that you'll take that opportunity with us and, you know, we'll be able to accept the grant and then we'll be able to use that for three years. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You got to tell me when to push the button. <laughs> um, I'm, De I'm Deputy Rob Pellerin, um, and thank you for having us here. Uh, I think this is uh, something that's just really, really important and will be really good for the community as a whole. Uh, as the sheriff had mentioned, I've been a school resource officer for 16 years. Uh, I started my career with the Sockville Police Department, and I did two years at Thornton Academy. Uh, and then I moved over to the Scarborough Police Department and was their SRO for 14 years before I retired and recently started here with the Sheriff's Department. Um, and I will be an SRO here at the Massabesic Middle School and the uh, elementary schools within the district. 
Um, so, you know, I just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about, you know, what an SRO, SRO is and what it can really do for the community and for the kids and how it makes the school safer. Uh, the SRO position has definitely evolved since, since it, it began. And I think Columbine was that first. I think there were some SROs before, but it was not a common thing. And then Columbine happened. They started putting police officers in schools. And I think primarily it was for safety. It was just to be in a security guard at a school. But it has evolved into something much, much more. It's evolved into um, an officer or deputy that's that's there for the kids and for the community. Um, so a school resource officer is a law enforcement officer responsible for maintaining safety and security within a school environment. They engage and build relationships with students, provide education on legal issues, and act as a liaison between the school and law enforcement. Um, and we'll elaborate a little bit more on this. It's a, it's a, it's a brief PowerPoint, but uh, it gets right to the point. Um, you know, when they talk about a safe and secure school, uh, we can secure the school physically. Um, and I think when we are in the school, we can make this, the kids feel safe. And when the kids feel safe, they can learn. Um, I think when, as you guys know, if, if a child isn't all there hundred percent, they're not going to be, they're not going to be engaged in school work. And if they're scared, if they're worried, and that just doesn't have to be things they see in the news, that could be things that are happening at home. That could be, those could be things that are happening within the school as, as far as bullying or being picked on or just, just, um, you know, adolescents, things, things that are happening to them. So, Got it. Um, so the roles and responsibilities is, like I said, it's overall safety of the students and staff. Um, that's what we're primarily there for. We're there, you know, all day. We're there for any sort of emergency that happens and we're ready to go. Extensive training um, and we're there for whatever happens. Uh, but building a positive uh, relationships in the school community. Um, you know, once you're in there, you're kind of a hybrid staff member in addition to being part of the sheriff's department or the police department that, uh, or whatever agency that you're working for. Um, but you become part of the family. You become a part of the community. Uh, collaborating with school staff to address potential issues. You know, we're in on all safety meetings. You know, I'm always, when I was in the schools, I was always thinking about how I could make the school safer. Even if it was safer than it's ever been, I was still always thinking about, you know, what I could do better to make that school safer. Things that I hadn't thought of before or going to trainings and learning new things that I could implement within the school. Um, educating students and their families on legal matters. A lot of what an SRO does, and I think there's some miscon misconceptions about what an SRO is in the school, that they're just going to be charging kids with crimes. That's really not what it is at all. It's, it's education. Uh, I've sat in on so many meetings with students and parents and principals, and it's basically just, it's, it's, it's a time for these kids to see and to learn what could happen to them if they don't kind of steer away from the the decisions that they've been making. Um, so it's, it's really important that, you know, they can see where it's going and I, I kind of explain uh, what could happen to them if they continue down this road. Uh, and uh, promoting a safe learning environment, we talked about that. Kids can't learn if they don't feel safe. Building trust within the school community, it is all about trust and it takes a while to build that trust, but you can get there. Um, and being a positive role model for students. And there are a lot of kids nowadays that don't have a positive role model. That it's some do, and even the ones that do, it's good for them to see another positive role model at the school. And maybe a, a police officer that maybe they're afraid of, that they've never been around police officers. But it's good for them to know that we are regular people. We have kids their age and you know, we do normal things and you can share those things with the kids. And I think it's a way to really bond and build that relationship. Um, so building positive relationships with the students, and that's something that I took pride. I was always building relationships with the kids. Um, and because I did that, they would come to me when they were when they were having trouble whether it was online, because there's all kinds of online bullying, whether it was within the school, 
on the school bus. We know a lot of stuff happens on the school bus at home or in their neighborhood. They felt comfortable enough to come and talk to me. Um, and, and that was a good thing. Identifying and addressing potential safety concerns before they escalate. You know, you see something happening. You can see it before it happens. And you can identify, I can identify kids that maybe I need to give a little bit of extra attention to. And that doesn't mean in a negative way. That means let's go play basketball. Let's talk. Let's let's do something fun. Let's do something that I can engage with you, something that I can relate with you. Because if I build that relationship with that student, I know that if that student in the future makes a bad decision, I'll have an easier time relating with that student. We'll be able to kind of try to correct that behavior. Um, collaboration with school staff um, to develop a, uh, emergency response plans. I did that in Scarborough. We met every month and we we kind of revamped our entire emergency plan. Um, that's not to say that that has to happen, but it's just another example of always striving and looking for what could be better, what could be safer. Um, and see, uh, intervention and conflicts to prevent violence and promote a positive school climate. Um, so I'm there immediately. So if something is happening, the school resource officer is there immediately. We're not thinking about a response time. You know, a response time in a city or a town that has a police department, there still is a delay. There could be a five, 10 minute delay. But when we're talking about rural patrol, we're talking about York County, you know, who knows how long that response time could actually be. But if something happens within the school and there's a school resource officer right there, we are right there. And it is my goal to do whatever I can to stop a problem before it happens. And it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be an active shooter. It could be anything from a fight. It could be anything from name calling. If you're right there, um, it's just, it's, you there to prevent it before it escalates. Um, an SRO is just not a, uh, is, uh, an SRO is just a resource, is not just a resource, sorry, for the students, uh, but the families as well. I always say to the families that uh, I'm not just your child's police officer or deputy, I'm also yours as well. So please, I can be a resource for families. So the school resource officer can be that resource. If families feel comfortable calling me or, or the, the school resource officer, opposed to calling the police department if they have a question or an issue, obviously I would encourage them in, in, in an emergency you call 901. But if you have a question, um, if things are, are weird or things at home are just not going well, you need advice with your child or you need some resources, I think the SRO can certainly point you in those directions to get the resources that you need. Um, so I always say that I'm also your personal police officer. I was just to say that. Um, opportunities for SROs to engage with students in a non-law enforcement context. That is key. Um, I won't, like I said, they need to see that SRO as a real person so they can build that trust. They need to see that SRO that, you know, it's like their mom or their dad. They're just a normal person and they're there to help them. They're there for their best interest. Um, building trust between the law enforcement and the community. And we know that schools are community centers. They really are, um, and, and especially in rural towns. The school is the place. That is where the community goes. Um, and I think that a school resource officer, in addition to being that SRO, is also a community officer or a community deputy. Um, you're there. You're at the hub. You can see the families. You get to know the families. Um, the families can trust you, and they get a positive outlook on law enforcement, a positive outlook on the police, um, and that we have promoting a positive perception of law enforcement among students. A lot of kids are afraid of the police, um, and in you see news stories about certain things, it just makes it worse. And I feel like every couple of years, there are negative stories about the police and it kind of all starts over again. And it's, you know, and I remember being in the schools and kids would ask me questions about, you know, why do police officers do this or that? And, and I love to take that opportunity to explain that to them about, you know, it's not all police officers and this is why we do certain things. So it, it is it's really good for those kids to see a positive impact that we can have on them. 
And for the last thing, I just wanted to share a quick story about building uh, a positive relationship with students. Uh, it was years ago, probably five or six years ago, maybe longer. I don't even remember, but uh, it was a, it was summertime, so school was not in session. I was working normal patrol. Um, it was about nine o'clock at night. We got called to a house in Scarborough because high school kid, um, probably I think 16, 17 years old, uh, wanted to kill himself. Parents called. Um, he was refusing any help. Um, he wasn't listening to them. He wasn't listening to anybody. And I just it just happened to be in my, my area. So I, I responded to the call and it happened to be a student that I was very familiar with, not in a bad way, but just building a community with because I knew him from the time he was in fifth grade when I taught him there all the way through middle school and into high school. So I had a rapport with him and I was able to really talk to him and convince him to go to the hospital. Um, so we brought him to the hospital and I didn't hear anything. I assumed everything was fine. Um, a few years later, I got an email out of the clear blue and it was him. And he was just thanking me for having that, that positive moment with him and thanking me for saving his life because he said he was going to kill himself. And that always, it always gets me because, um, you know, he wasn't a kid that was on my radar for any reason whatsoever. He was just a kid at the school and he was a kid that I made a relationship with that I spoke with on a human level and just told him stories about my life and he shared stories about his life and um and I thank God that I was able to have that relationship and was able to get him the help that he needed. So any questions? Wow. There's so much probably. So yeah it's 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 I can't stress how important it is. It is, it is so good to make these connections. Some of these kids crave that connection. There are some kids, you know, and I've worked in the middle school a lot. There are some kids that won't acknowledge your existence, but there are some kids that will not leave my side. They will not leave my side. They have to be right with me. And that's okay. As long as they're where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there. But um, I love when kids come in and talk to me. And the kids that don't say hello in the morning, I really try to get in there and say, you know, because I, you know, I have teenagers, so I get it. Um, so I really love to do that. And um, I think that if you go forward with this, you know, we'll pick the perfect person to be in that school, the perfect person that can build those community relations. And I think it'll be really, really good, not only for the school, for safety, but for the community as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Questions? Yeah. yeah. Other questions? Other questions? Bill, do you want to come on up for a minute and just sort of like, so obviously this is a financial decision. It's not, it's, there's a heart part of it. There's the, um, there's the safety part of it. I think that's a big piece for us and our concerns. Um, honestly, particularly in Lebanon, because we don't have that um, opportunity. But there is a financial aspect. So do you want to talk about the grant a little bit in terms of what that does? I, I, uh, I do a county deputy. A new deputy comes in. I'm going to use rough numbers, $80,000. It could go from $80,000 to $120,000. And again, Rob had mentioned that it will be a collaboration. We expect the school board or the school to be in on the interviewing of the, uh, of the deputy that we select. We need to get somebody that has the same type of philosophy. We need to have somebody that will fit into the community. Um, and that may not be somebody that's existing. We may advertise for it. The same thing we did with Rob. We advertised for it because we didn't have anybody that we thought really fit the criteria or that the uh, superintendent thought would be there. And then we found Rob. So, um, so I really can't give you hard numbers. But I always like to say, let's call it $100,000. That's right in the middle. Uh, and again, that that uh, forty-two thousand will offset that. Um, there is a startup cost with the vehicle, and what what uh, the county does does sometimes is that we'll just prorate it. We'll buy the vehicle, and it will charge you ten thousand dollars a year or something along that line. But then, that, then again, the school owns that. The other thing that I want to do, and I hope that we can go on that journey together, is to talk to the town of Lebanon. 
and say, gee, I mean, you know, you know, they, when the person's not working in the summertime, they'll be patrolling. And we can always say that they'll patrol in Lebanon. So we want Lebanon to to um, you know, to contribute some of the money to it. Again, I mean, th this school is isolated. Rob had mentioned that, you know, sometimes the response time is, is a lot. It, it is. When you see the amount of arrests that we make out of Lebanon, I want you to think about it. Sometimes you know, we have nine towns through a collaboration agreement with the Maine State Police. They have five of our towns. But if an arrest is made, we've got four deputies out there. An arrest is made. That deputy goes from Lebanon to the jail, and then he has to go back. So that leaves a huge void. Mm -hmm. And an SRO in the school. And if something should happen, you know, with the training now, it's no no longer is it Columbine. We are waiting for backup. You immediately go. Uh, and again, there's a lot of nuances whether the firearm is in the car or the long gun is in the car, in the uh, vehicle or not. Excuse me, or in the school or not. You know, that's again, that's a decision that we can make later on. But but yeah, you're going to have ready access to an SRO that's there to protect your children. And I can't think of any other school that I think is more needed in Lebanon because of the isolation that we have there. So, yeah, is there a financial? Yes, there is a financial consideration. Um, but I hope that you see the benefits for that. And you might hear someone say, well, gee, I don't live in Lebanon. My kid doesn't go to that school. Well, those children are going to be going to middle school and then they're going to be going to high school. And if we have, if we can kind of catch these types of aberrant behaviors early, I mean, they'll make a better, they'll be a better high school student. So I, um, again, I mean, it's, it's, we can come up with some hard numbers, but we really can't until we choose who the SRO is. And that could be your choice. You might say, I want a new guy. I want some, some, some new fellow that, that we send to, uh, Natural training, and, and he does that, and he comes in at, and again, I'm using rough numbers, $80,000. And again, $80,000, it sounds like a lot, but that's with all the benefits included. Right. So. Questions for well, Sheriff King? Did uh, Hussey and Northward, do they have in the elementary schools SROs? So, no. What, what happens now is Milton will be available in Berwick. Mm -hmm. And in North Berwick, um, Johnny might go down if necessary, but Steve, you know, Chief Peasley is like, they're not far away. Right. I mean, the, the, the real true difference in this is really the isolation in the towns. Like, that's our current SRO standing. We have two. One in, there. in Berwick at the middle school and one here at the high school. And they do see, like, so Milton does dare for the Berwick schools. And actually, I think he's even gone up to Lebanon to do dare. How long have those been in place? I'm sorry? How long have those SROs been in place? Oh, gosh. Time. Uh, yeah. Denise, get any thoughts on how long is how long have we had SROs? A long time. Yeah. That's why I get on the board. So yeah. my assumption would be the grants for three years. When the grants up, we, we, we incur the entire... So what ha currently happens for our SROs in Berwick and North Berwick is that the town and the school district share cost sharing. Um, the time that during the school years, school year time frame, basically we are paying for that person because it's a 40 hour a week job. Yep. And in the summer times and over breaks, um, that person is still employed by the town and they do patrolling for the regular part. So it's it's a split based on um, actual work time and where they are. Yep. So we, we do have a collaboration with both Berwick and with North Berwick and have contracts with them. I'm hoping we can replicate that in 11. That would be I think the initial step would with you folks. And I have a comment. Lebanon is well armed. <laughs> Go. I, go ahead, Travis. <laughs> I have a I have a few questions. Um, the first one is more or less directed toward, toward Sheriff King. You gave a whole bunch of statistics about activity in Lebanon. Um, is that directly related to the school in Lebanon, or was that town wide? All those statistics that you have for Lebanon. No, that, that that would be town wide. Okay. Do we have any idea what? of those statistics are actually related to the Hanson and elementary school that we would need police or that we've used police presence for? 
Yeah, I, I did not. Um, I don't have that information available. Uh, you're talking about how many calls directly to the school? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I don't have that information. And okay. it probably isn't a lot. It's probably not a lot because people, what, what happens, at least in our communities, when when we, if you ask the main state police or if you ask, um, uh, if you run the statistics, when we go into a town, the calls for service go up. So if the town doesn't have a contract deputy and they just drink, they work on the general patrol and all of a sudden we'll go in. Let's just take uh, Waterboro, for example. They have two contract deputies. Before they had a contract deputy, they had calls, people would call. <clears throat> but then when you, as soon as you had a contract deputy and they knew it, my God, the calls would skyrocket. The first year, Scott, the calls will go up. And then after that, they will sort of mellow down. People say, gee, I really have service. I can really, somebody's going to come. Somebody's going to listen to me. Somebody's going to take the time to follow it up. Yeah, and you get a lot, lot more calls. That's what's going to happen at the school. I guarantee that even though I can't say, well, we've gone to the school 10 times, but if they know that there's an SRO and the kids are going home, yeah, I mean, I think Rob touched on that, that, you know, you're really the SRO for the community, you know, for the for the families too. Yeah, we'll, we'll get a lot of... Uh, We'll get a lot of calls out of that. So to follow that up is the thought process that that SRO is not going to be 100% dedicated to the school. They would be able to be pulled for the town of Lebanon emergency calls. That's a great question. The answer to that is no. That is a very, very good question. Um, no, because the school is, if, if there's an emergency call, we're not going to leave the school open. We don't do that in any of our towns, but I understand that uh, uh, that would be a concern, but no. So if we had um, SROs in uh, North Berwick and Berwick, is that correct? Um, what is the cost for them now? And is it, he just said it's the same thing. They stay at the school for a certain amount of time and then whatever it is. I don't have the cost off the top of my head, Victoria, but I can, we can have them for you. I don't. Great, yeah. thank you. I, th I think I think the cost is in kind of important. I mean, it sounds like the county has already been awarded a grant for this position, uh, whether we accept it or not is the is the issue. Right. Yeah. Um, but you know, what's the county share is going to be? What's the school share going to be? What's the town of Lebanon share going to be? Mm -hmm. uh, that that's some important information for us to have before we can make any decisions in this. But is that the same thing that's happening in the other two towns? It's. So the difference is there were originally um, what they call COPS grants for both the Berwick SRO and the North Berwick SRO. When those grants ran out after the three-year period, the towns and the school system determined that they felt like it was beneficial. And so those costs were incurred by the town and the schools together. So it's the same process for Yes. It is. Um, it, the difference is that there's a, currently a police force in each of the other two towns. So there wasn't the same level of like the towns were pretty much on board right away. Um, and I, we haven't had a conversation fully with Lebanon. I think that um, Sheriff King's had more conversations than we have. This, this was just an opportunity for us to say, if this becomes available, is it something the board wants to pursue? And we definitely have had um, um, citizen requests for SROs in our, in, an SRO in Lebanon because we do have them in the other two. So this is really just us following through. Right. So would it have to be in, conjun in conjunction with the town? It would yeah. not have to be in conjunction with the town now, just because we have some funding support. Um, it would be great if it were in conjunction with the town, but that may or may not be doable. But going forward, if we got this grant, if we were to jump on board, there's a three-year time frame where we would be having to look at how are we going to supplement the funding that's already been provided? Because um, for two reasons. One, um, a person's not gonna take a school year position as an SRO necessarily, unless they are sure that they have 
a position, the other part of it, you know, it's that. So those are all things that just we need to think about. But it is the same process that we did in the other two towns. It is initially starting processes. And exactly. Yep. Yep. And am I did I understand you correctly that you've had those conversations, Sheriff King, with Lebanon? Right now, there isn't an appetite for. I've had many conversations with the town of Lebanon uh, about a uh, contract deputy for the town. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. They've been. Um, you know, they, they seem interested, and then they just lose their appetite, and it's always not, uh, it's not going to fit in the budget this year. This is a little different right. because I, I like we can tell them, and I'd love to do it with you, Mrs. Austin, is that we go to the board, select board, and say, look, this is what we're going to do. We, I, there is going to be a presence in town. They're not going to be responding to calls, but there is going to be a presence in town and taking care of a lot of those quality of life issues that as people come in to pick up their children and what have you. But they are off the summertime. We can commit to Lebanon that, gee, well, they'll patrol Lebanon in the summertime. Mm -hmm. uh, and Lebanon has, you know, mud runs and they have a lot of lot of issues on the road. And, you know, we could just, we could take care of it that way. I, I, I am optimistic that they would join you. I don't know how much, but I'm optimistic that they may Join and pray the cost. Chef King, um, what what's your current um, patrol um, like for for Lebanon Elementary? I'm sure you guys patrol Lebanon. Like, how how often are you driving by Lebanon Elementary schools currently? How often are we driving by it? Well, you know, it, 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 we this fall volume in Lebanon is very high, um, and I really can't tell you how. You know, I mean, there's, there's four deputies for nine pounds. Mm. I mean, so we go from Lebanon you know, to Parsonsville. So it, it's, it's, you know, it's a lot. We do, we have parked in Lebanon quite a bit only because of the calls for service. There's a lot of calls for service and I can get you those statistics. But, um, but it might give you, I don't want to give you a false sense of security thing. We're there on X amount of calls for service more so than any of the other towns. Because when they're there for a call for service, if they're committed, yeah. you know. And, and state police doesn't typically patrol. Is that what I understood? You, you, you guys take care of Lebanon. State police doesn't typically. The, the state police um, have, you know, they've combined Troop A and I think Troop C to have the Southern Field Command. So they've concentrated their resources up in the New Field area up, up north, the Cornish, the Limerick, in that area. So it's easier for them to kind of have people up there in Oxford County and in York County to spread out their patrols. So Lebanon was just too far away. And so we basically, we swapped towns okay. uh, and um, we, we swapped several towns. So now we have basically the Southern end and the uh, in Lebanon area, Sanford. So you said that it would be somewhere between 80 and 100,000 for, well, I'm taking it that that's the initial year. Right. I, what, I'm talking about how much it costs to, ha to hire a deputy. Right. I mean, I think that the, the bottom line deputy comes in around 61000 and plus his, his, all his benefits and things like that. So it gets up to about eighty. But then if you pick somebody that's been here for a while and they get all the insurances and stuff, you know, it could be up to $120,000, $125,000. The initial startup cost, though, will include a vehicle. Mm -hmm. which is, I think, at last time was like 42000 So, I mean, there is there is a cost, you know, there, there is a cost here. Um, again, the startup cost of the vehicle is a lot, but, and it depends on who you pick. You know, it depends on who you, uh, who you choose. You might want a, a new fellow, a guy that uh, um, is relatively new and he wants to get, in, get into this. I'm sorry, did you? I, so, um... So there's a forty-two thousand dollar grant. Is that per year? Yes, ma'am. Okay, for three years. For three years. Okay, so that's that's the first three years. So say it was a hundred and we'll go with one hundred twenty because it's nice and round. So that leaves eighty thousand that's got to come from the school and the town, right? The initial would be cool. right now. We're looking at it strictly from the schools. So just just to be clear, because we haven't approached the town about this at all. This is really just something that um, we've talked about in terms of the school resource piece. Right. But if you get a buy in from the town, yeah. then then it's in it. Is it an even split? No. Is that what you're talking about? Or is there 
some so, sharing the time, you know, because yeah. you have the school year, which would be the priority, and then you have the summer months left right. over. So the percentage would, I mean, just I'm just round numbers: twenty five percent for the summer and seventy five percent of the school of the year, you know, is the school. So that would be a, just a, a beginning cool. point of of having the discussions, right? Yeah. The cost okay, would be so 75, 25. So it's distributed. By, but that's not even, but, it's not even, we don't even know because there's no negotiation. We have to go right. in with the assumption that school right. district is paying 100%. Right. Like that's, our decision has to be based on that idea. Am I correct in saying that? That's what I yes. would, I would definitely be like, look. For the first three years anyway, yeah. Right. Yeah, and if, and if right. we're able and to. Once, once the grant goes away, then you're looking at then Holy the pain. full, yeah. Are but no matter saying? really what happens, we're not actually paying 100%. We're paying that 75% because the county is going to pay the 25% because they have to patrol anywhere. They're going to be at their beck and call in the summertime. Right. I mean, we would hire for, if, if we were not able to get buy-in from the town, I would say we would just hire for the school year. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you would have to kick in the other side of it because that would just be you know, necess necessary to hire somebody, really, so. Right. And, and I'll, I'll tell you one of the selling points that I have already thought of for the town. I mean, the school is part of the town. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, this, uh, I mean, I, I don't really see how the, the select board can say, well, that's the school and we're the town. I mean, the school is part of the town. I mean, if something happens at the school, we're going to go in there. So I'm very hopeful. And again, I got a lot of positive comments from them, but the appetite just isn't there to pull the trigger on a complete deputy. Yeah, we've 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 tried that in Lebanon before, and it was it was shot down really bad. Yeah, there's a bad history. Just yes. 25 years ago, it was not good. It's just yeah. all I'm saying. Five years ago, <laughs> right? There there is a bad history. If if maybe that's why I was wondering about the distribution. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's 50 50, you know, you might be able to convince the town, you know, $40,000 would be worth it, especially during the summer when our population rises. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, I, we've, we've been there with the whole car and equipment and wages and, and all that kind of stuff. And the, they were like, you know, you know <laughs> okay, all right, good, you're well armed. So I, I, I hope that your approval isn't contingent upon Lebanon I, I, I'm, because because I mean again I'm, I'm optimistic but I don't know if it will happen but mm -hmm. again I mean I'll, I'll try and, and we can work together on that so what do you need from us tonight is it is it about information tonight is it is it so about I need a vote? timeline from like you need to know at a certain point so that <clears throat> that you can either cast us out or move and move on to somebody else or I, I don't really have a timeline i mean i just i would like to have a commitment obviously so i can kind of um you know so i can say yes we're, we're gonna we're, take we're the grant right? take that so I, mean, I would like to have a commitment obviously so would this start next school yeah, be year? not this year next yes, school year next school year yeah. and for our budget process as well we need to right. my my hard question with the budget would be what are we willing to give up right. to get this? Mm -hmm. yep. Right. And I think that that's that's the hard part. This is just not going to be a plus. Right. I would disagree. I think we need parity in the three towns. I think we should have an officer there because there isn't a, even a department. We have an officer in the other two towns and police departments, and in Lebanon, we got nothing. I, I, I agree with you. I want the SRO. I'm mm -hmm. I'm with you in saying I want the SRO. I'm just saying, what are we going to give up in our budget to get the SR on level? I, I don't see it that way. Okay. This is something that we need. Well, and I, I think, honestly, Josh, I think this is the beginning of a, of a very hard conversation. And the reality is, is we need to decide, in my opinion, you need to decide what's important mm -hmm. and that you'd like to fight for versus, I don't think we can, I don't think I can say to you, if you do this, then I'll give up this. I'm not there yet. I don't have that. I don't. And so that's a, that's a board conversation about if we choose to move forward with this idea, um, yes, we'll have to think about the rest of it, but it may not be a tit for tat, you know? So, and I think that's like, we're gonna have some fun philosophical conversations about that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that this decision, I think the board needs to decide if we feel that this is an important um, position, then we need to talk about whether or not we can go forward with that. And then 
I, I don't I don't like to say it this way, but we will we will have to figure out the back end of it. But what are we putting on the list of things that we are going to say these are important and we're going to fight for these? And I think we also have to not assume you're going to get town support for this. But I 100. Yeah, this is definitely. in my opinion this is a yeah. school. I mean, just as long as everybody think knows yeah. that. Yeah, you know I we'll would try our best. But I think that the honest, yeah. I but, think that's frustrating. And I think that's one of the reasons we really need the first. Oh, Heather LaFrance is here. Heather, and Heather, if you could. So Heather is the principal of Lebanon Elementary and Hanson School. And just just your, your impressions, your need, if you could speak to that, please. Um, I will say, start off by saying I'm really excited by this possibility. I think our school, our students would really benefit from something like this. I think um, one of the things um, we do miss is that positive police presence in our schools and that, that what that would bring to our students as well. Um, we have occasionally had to um, call on um, the on the York County to come. Um, and when we do for situations, um, it it does take time. Um, and um, so if we call about a student or something, usually what they dispatch will say, yep, if it's a student, we're coming right away and it can take over 20 minutes depending on where they come from. So, um, you know, it would be beneficial to have them in the schools to build those relationships with students. I think um, our, I can just, there's a lot of wonderful positive things that could happen that would really benefit our students. And I'm thinking just the interactions that they would have, the um, the help with some of those um, more challenging situations that pop up um, between families and students as well. So I'm happy to also answer any questions about that too. But I just really would, I think it would be a really beneficial impact to our all of our students. Yeah, but you don't have that town police department to reach out to like the other two towns. And I, I the other towns are great. Like I reach out to um, Officer Fong and, uh, and, and he gives me guidance on certain things as well too. Um, but again, he is in Berwick and so it's a little harder. Well, and there's jurisdiction issues. I mean, we there definitely yeah. try to make sure that our Berwick PD check in with the county before they just toddle off into exactly. <laughs> it's not their jurisdiction you know? but it does happen yeah sure that's a burden on other towns so i i i think yeah the parity issue here is yeah. and i mean officer kelker has been great too answering yep. questions that i might have too but again you ran into the same things yep. what about school that's um that's an interesting question yeah. Because we actually have not utilized our SROs during summer school, except for maybe they'll the right. you know, during their mm -hmm. patrol time. Because mm -hmm. so, at some level, we have to give the towns their due, plus because they're paying for it. <laughs> so, yeah. um, not to be a Debbie Downer, but last year when there was the threat in Sanford and everything that happened with that, and we had huge huge presence in our audience after that and so many concerns from how parents and teachers and everyone felt then I feel like if we're fully responsible for that eighty thousand dollars you can't put a price on that like I agree that was just totally. crazy it hit so close to home there's nobody there um and I think that for the security of that situation and a horrific day like that but thankfully nothing happened. Um, whether we find it, whether we add it, whatever, like, I don't think it's, I think we need to just figure out what we're doing with it and do it. I disagree um, in that there's a lot of people that listen to scanners throughout Lebanon. They know exactly what's going on. Until you knew. There was still a good 30 minutes where regardless of scanners, regardless of anything, you didn't know. And that was terrifying to get a text from my niece of like active shooters in my school right now. I love you. Like, but that's terrifying. Would, that was the hoax. One I, I wouldn't base it on one incident. I, yeah. I think what you're saying though, is that having that, if that were real, like, right. There's no but, other resource there. Yeah. But there is, is what I'm saying. I is in that everyone around me, I know is well armed. And many of them listen to the scanners. They are listening to the scanners. They know what's going on. If there was something going on in Lebanon, a, a, an active shooter, we have a ton of veterans. 
there would be people pulling out their guns. Hey, did, and there would be call trees. Terrifying. So it's not, it's not necessarily as That's isolated as you would think. Is there a way? I don't think we need to. Re we should rely on common. Uh, no, common. No. Yeah, no, no, I mean, that's terrifying. Is is there a way to sort of make Lebanon parents and citizens aware to know what they're thinking? They might be for this. Sure. You know? mm -hmm. um, and the other question is, I know he didn't have a timeline, but we must have a time. We have to have a time. So, yeah. I mean, we've got a lot of information. We've already, <clears throat> already having a lot of discussion. What would our timeline be so that we can move ahead and... Uh, yeah, so... And I just want to also add, like, I'm, I'm thinking of this resource not um, strictly for the worst case scenario, right. um, but for all those little things that happen along the way too, uh, that would hopefully ultimately prevent the worst case scenario too. So Heather, do you think that we could do um, like a survey for parents and other, I don't know how to reach the whole, well, could, should we do a straw poll of our, right now for uh, us? School reach system, school we can do it. Yeah. Draw yeah. For, so, I mean, for, you know, for should, parents, should we do, for sure. Sorry. That's okay. We're just having, should we have a straw poll to say, do we want to pursue it further? Not that we're voting tonight, obviously, but just to pursue. Yeah, I think that would be So, good. can we just have a straw poll? Who's in favor of moving forward to at least look into this? So we're just saying looking into it, like the surveys and stuff like that. Yeah. Any more we're not saying yes, we're doing it. We're just, are we willing to, do we want to look into look, it more? Look into it more. Um, we, obviously, we have to look at the financial situation, the financial part of it, and a lot of other particulars, but um, maybe just a straw poll, and we can have further discussion if we decide to. So. I'm looking into it. Uh, Hands up if you're in favor of pursuing it. Um, Gather more information. All right, and then then we can come up with a timeline and a process for further discussion on this. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think we definitely. I think our just ultimately looking. Up, I would say we need to have a decision for by the end of January. Okay, I think that's reasonable. Okay. And thank you, gentlemen. You yes, gave us so a, lot, a lot to think about and talk about. Really appreciate you, appreciate it. And Heather as well. Thank you. Thank you again. Oh, we got his presentation is right there. I'm going to put it into the minutes. Uh, and moving on to the district web page update. Estacchio, you're on. <laughs> I'm going to connect my computer hmm? just so we can look. All right, I'll get out of the way. It looks very nice, by the way, everything I've seen on there. I like that under construction that pops up right away. Yeah, except I need to fix it so it's not popping up every single time. <laughs> Click on a different tab. But, um, so I'm just going to start reading uh, the update that I wrote up just because there was a lot of different little things done. Uh, so I'm going to read through this so I can stay concise and then I'm going to show two different websites kind of to show like the previous look versus what we're moving towards this year. Can um, we try and turn the TV towards the screen so maybe I can see it possibly? I don't know if I'll be able to do it. At least make the attempt. Customer. Yeah, I'm using well. the computer tech here. Yeah, so uh, Travis, what I'm going to have you do is just uh, once I actually start showing the websites, I'm just going to have you open a different tab on your computer and look on the website on your computer. Do you want me to just turn oh, this or is that going to not um, on the TV? Somebody turned the camera. No, I would leave it because I don't think he's going to have a good view of this okay. anyways from the TV. Okay. So it'll be better if he just looks on his screen. Mm -hmm. um, Can you turn so, the oh, Okay. Yeah. I'm going to read through this one way to see if it's connected. That's it. Uh, so, uh, for those in the audience that don't know me, my name is Asaki Donis. I'm the communications director for the district. Um, that is why I do part time in the district. I'm also a fifth grade music teacher at the Knowlton School in Berwick. Um, and so, uh, basically, with the website, uh, we don't have a website manager in the district. So this role in the past has been done by 
members of the science department when they have the time, and usually they don't have time. So since uh, coming to this role last year, I've been starting to pick up a little bit more of the website updating and whatnot. Um, but then really taking a look at um, what do we need to do to prioritize accessibility, visibility, and then coming up with a system to keep updating the website regularly. Um, so uh, I'm wrapping up kind of phase one of this right now, which is which includes the following. I'm just going to uh, list these off. Uh, uh, aligned branding with our communications, so the same fonts, same colors, etc. Uh, originally, there were around 14 different fonts being used around the website, and some were a little more difficult to read. Um, so now it's down to our primary three fonts that we use in our communications. Wow. Um, and then removed a lot of sites that were inactive or out of date, uh, removed out of date uh, COVID information that's still been up. Uh, there were some links that would still link back to like 2013 or 2014. So those have either been removed or updated. Um, a lot of our websites across all of the school sites. So what I'm going to show what's updated tonight is the district website, but then there's also school sites which have to be updated separately, which is 11 total different websites that have to be managed and edited manually. It can't all be like a, you click a button and it does it to everything. Um, so just some uh, other functionality things added a search button. So, cause there's so many different things you can find on the website. So now on the front page, you can just type it in and try to find it. Uh, added a quick tip submission uh, for safety. So there's an anonymous reporting system now that community members can use. Um, find it, uh, me to find it fast section. So like our most essential kind of buttons for parents and families like the calendar the lunch menus, and that's going to be across every page, but it's also on the home page. Um, and then this one, which took significantly longer than I anticipated, was updating the staffing directories across all the school websites with up-to-date photos and restructured it for ease of navigation. Um, and then adding the newsletter and school meetings on the front page. Um, so what I've done was I've published the district website. So it should be updated. Let's see if I can actually connect. You can use your pencil again. Go for it. Um, all right. Yay. So this is um, what the old website looks like. And if you can't see it very well, when you go home, you can look at your computer. So, um, it, there's some pretty cool visuals and whatnot that were added originally, like the video and whatnot. But the feedback that staff and families have said is there's just too much going on. And when they go on, they just want to find what's important, get the information they need and go. Um, and so this is an example of a site that does quite a few updates to do. Um, for example, there's like the photo carousel happening while there's a video playing in the background it's like and it makes it dizzy. um a calendar without <laughs> dates on it um, and then the announcements at the bottom so that's one page middle school same thing there's just kind of a, it's overstimulating uh and not functional uh, and that's kind of where they call it so <laughs> The priority right now is just making it so people can find what they need quickly. So the district website. The fonts are a little different, so there's more um, so easier to read. I just changed fonts so um, that are more readable. There's links to upcoming dates, especially uh, school board meetings when they are, because that's a question I hear all the time is when are they going to happen? So now right on the front of the page, when they come on, they can see when and where they're going to happen. Um, so that we can hopefully bring in more and more people. Uh, the most up-to-date uh, newsletter, which went out at 5 p.m. today, already almost 2,000 readers. Um, and then announcements. This includes uh, agendas, uh, et cetera, things that are put out from the central office. 
And then this is the find it fast button I was talking about. So for parents, they can go to uh, Infinite Campus. They can open their breakfast and lunch menus. Uh, go to the Ride 360 app, which is for those who have students who ride the bus. Uh, is something they use all the time. Um, student registration for new families. Uh, and then I create a community input um, button that's not working right now. That will be in like an hour. Uh, I made a form just so if can you can make it. Uh, also trying to make it more accessible because I know there's people who are third shift workers or coming to a board meeting is not sometimes possible. Um, so there's another outlet for people in the community to send in feedback or input, uh, and that can send it down the appropriate channels. Um, and then we'll go calendar, et cetera. And then a link to our Facebook page. If you have Facebook, um, I suggest you follow our Facebook page because that's where you see the good stuff. Um, I know lots of really fun conversations happen on Facebook. And by fun, I mean controversial. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great if people also saw the good things happening. Um, and so um, that's kind of the shift we made. Oh, this was the um, the quick tip form. So for those of you who haven't seen it yet, this is the, the form they can submit. Um, contact information is optional, of course. Um, we have had three quick tips already that's awesome it is mm -hmm. this is live already this this site is live um and then the other ones aren't because what i wanted to do first was roll this out start getting feedback and then um the week like basically my days between the christmas and new years those few days i'm going to be working on just rolling this out across all the websites so on january 1st all of our websites will have a different look. The other thing is the previous version of the website did not function very well on phones at all. It would take very long to load or it would crash. So now the website also works on phones because that's how most people address it. So that was phase one. And now I'm just going to uh, read off what's coming next. Uh, and then I can also send it to the, if people are interested, as well as the rest of the So, um, Creating a dashboard for our strategic plan um, that will have indicators so the community can see our progress with how we are using our and implementing our strategic plan over the next seven years. And I already have the different um, components of it um, set up. Um, creating a better way to contact and email our staff on the directory. Uh, without publicly displaying their email addresses to mitigate spam and bots. Because that's kind of a trick, uh, tricky thing right now is we want people to be able to reach out and contact the people they need. Uh, but also the minute you put up an email, like the spam rolls in very quickly. Um, and then updating specific department site photos as I'm receiving new photos from the departments, uh, which I've reached out to them and asked them uh, just because I can't be everywhere. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to get more. Uh, for the About Us page on the site, uh, my hope is to add little bios and photos of our superintendent, assistant superintendent, director of teaching and learning, and then director of uh, technology. Um, and then uh, create a link to like the central office directory, which currently does not exist yet. Um, and then for the school board page, I want to revamp it to include the photos that I'm taking of tonight after the meeting, uh, as well as once I send a little questionnaire of who you are, why you are in the position you are, then I'll put those up as well. So anyone new to the community can kind of just go and check it out and see who everyone else is. Um, and then my phase three, which will be after February break, will be updating the budget information page to include breakdowns of uh, what different aspects of the budget means because if there's one thing I learned from the budget hearing last year is there's a lot I don't know and I'm not the only one in the community who doesn't know so hopefully I will provide another resource for people to go and see what's this part of the budget what does that mean what am I actually voting for um, and then for the employment opportunities page I'm in the process of creating videos from staff across different roles such as transportation uh, high school teacher elementary teacher 
food service, et cetera. So people interested in working in this district can go see some actual testimonials of what it means to be a part of Noble. Um, and then the last thing I'm hoping to have set up by the by around April or so is updating the school and community information to include a community business bulletin and a list of partnerships. Uh, once I create a system that I can keep up with to keep having um, community events and stuff shared just to further make us, you know, a conduit for the different parts of our community. So that's why I remembered to write down. I'm sure there's a few other things I've forgotten done. It's a lot of things that I haven't done before and learning new skills like these buttons didn't exist before. What I did was I drew them on my iPad and then learned how to embed them into here. Um, so it's a lot of, it's been moving slow because it's a lot of skills that I've had to learn. But by the end of this, it'll, it'll be set up. So like once this update happens, we're not gonna have this huge, when's the, up, the website being updated? It's gonna be a continuous thing, so. Nice. I'll go ahead. <laughs> Are there any questions? If you come up with anything else, feel free to let me know. Um, I was hoping to get more of it done before the holidays, but you know, a little busy. Um, and it's just the reality of this position in part time. So um, yeah, anything else you can think of or if you have any suggestions that you see once you start exploring the website more, feel free to send them my way. I have a quick to any and all. I have a quick question. Yeah. When you're talking about the budget process. Is there a way that you, and I'm sure there is, that you could actually put in the date, some of the dates that we're going to be meeting where we community can be here to hear us go through the process as we're doing it? Absolutely. I think that would be very eye-opening to a lot of people of, and they're welcome to come here. And I don't know if they know that, but they are. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping to have like those dates for like the budget workshops and then um, hopefully bring as much, as many people as possible to the budget hearing. Right. So I'm also going to be trying to, either make paper copies of some of those things and sharing it out at the libraries and town halls and uh, things like that. But yeah, hopefully my goal is to make it as, you know, reach as many people as possible. Excellent. Thank you. Good job. Well done. Well done. Well done. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Speaking of budget, here we budget go. Budget timeline oh, is next on the agenda. Um, I think there's uh -oh. that one. It's, it's enough paper. Re, here's more paper. Wait, this is a re um a handout, a recycled handout. Um we handed this out earlier this year. And um what I did for this particular piece of paper was just take out all the all the information ahead. And I just left some of the big items for the board. For example, on that first draft that you got it said order the notebooks for the budget book and there's left them that's fine um so this is just all the information for you to know so on thursday february 15th um the budget binders will go to the board for you to have and we try to align that with the board meeting so that you can have it at that time sometimes we will call earlier in that we can just say if you're around and you want to stop over that up that's fine so there's from february 15th to saturday march 2nd you'll have your budget um, materials to look through but really saturday march 2nd is the day and i highlighted that that's the saturday from eight to two that we're having our cost centers come in um, to talk through their budgets um, in more detail so that's that's an important meeting that's why i highlighted it is that the reason it's on saturday it is on, yes. That's one of the reasons why it's on Saturday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes three things I'm supposed to be at. Uh -oh. day. <laughs> uh, so then I, for visual, for visuals, for the visual purpose, um, I tried to just narrow it down by month. So March, then April, then May, and then the June. So that's all broken down for you. One thing we hit a crunch on is when we, start getting into the fact that when the budget is due, when it when it's due to go to press. And so sometime that those two weeks, even though we may only have a, a meeting scheduled for Thursday, 
if we feel like we need more time, we may need to call a meeting on a Tuesday or a Monday for those that can make it just so we can get through some of this. Um, we mentioned that last year, um, we North Berwick needed information faster than what we had planned on. We were, um, you know, they gave us a very quick turnover. And so we had to make some very quick decisions. So now that we have that notice about what they need for their timing to send their information to the printers, we're working from that, really from North Berwick. Um, so again, we could have more meetings. We may not need more meetings, but I don't want anybody to feel rushed through this process. I know we've talked a little bit about the fact that, you know, it's hard sometimes to make a decision in the moment. And we're going to try to give a lot of information so that we don't have to do that. But but if it comes down to that that last week, we may just really have to make some decisions after we've discussed it for a couple of meetings. Um, so I just thought just having this again, and we will share it electronically, um, would be important. Uh, the other highlighted date is Thursday, May 23rd, and that's the budget meeting at the high school. And that's in the theater um, or the auditorium. And we do hope that the whole board can be there for that for that day. And that's when the, the community comes in. Asakia was talking a little bit about that, but the community comes in when we go through the budget from the, the board's budget. So again, I just wanted to, to just recap that again, and we'll send an electronic version. That's right. All right, thank okay, you. sure. Uh, employment. Yes, we have a leave of absence request that um, typically comes to the board for approval. So we have Kristen McKenzie, who teaches fourth grade at Norton School. She um, is due to have a child on, on or around January 2nd. So she will be taking family medical leave for um, the amount of time that she's able to do so. She is requesting an additional 12 weeks, which would take the rest of the school year um, off. Her plan would be if granted that she would come back right away, you know, in August. Um, we did post for a long-term sub for the maternity leave. We do have somebody who's currently in the building, who's a certified teacher, who's going to be able to cover the maternity leave, but who would also be able to cover if you grant the, the remainder of the time. So we do need a motion and a second and a vote. I'd make a motion to accept. Okay. Yeah. All in favor of allowing the leave? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for employment. That's it for employment. All right. Uh, superintendent update. Okay, a few updates. We are we we met with transportation with Brenda Cravens and Rachel Pelletier uh, earlier this week. So we are still down two bus drivers for routes and one flex driver. We do um, have a couple still new you know new um, people who have inquired that are working on the CDL. So we have some in the pipeline. So that's good. Um, we're happy about that. We, so that's that piece. Um, we have noticed, as I'm sure parents have noticed and community members have noticed, but that we do, are, we are getting more illness this time of year. Um, so we have had some staff out more so than we had prior to Thanksgiving. And we do have um, in a little bit of an increase of students that are out as well. So it's like mostly the cold that we're seeing at this point in time, um, but it's it's coming. You know, so yeah. So for those of you that are new, we um, prior to COVID, we didn't really report on absences, but because of COVID, we started to report absences because that really helped us with do we need to, you know, take a couple days here to just make sure that this school's okay. So we we will keep you updated on just percentages um, when we get into flu season because flu season's just flu season. So we just like to provide that information. Um, so that's that. We had parent conferences for all schools um, in November and those were very well attended. And we had a, a few things, let's see, for our, we have, we have, so we had the play 
right before Thanksgiving, which was Little Shop of Horrors. That went really well. It was a fun production. We had our athletics, the fall athletics ended, the winter athletics are coming in. Um, we did have our, let me see what it is, our eSport Rocket League won the main state championships. Um, <laughs> yep. So that's great. And um, we're just excited to start some of our our winter things, winter activities. We had a concert today. Lebanon had their concert, their holiday concert. Other schools are doing so as well. I think North Berwick's is tomorrow during the day, I think, or is it next there's, week? Um, it's coming. There's fourth grade is at the high school. Yes. I forget when. And then K through four is at the elementary school on the Friday before break. Sure. Yes. Um, so the schools are working really hard to keep track. Um, you have that link on your email. I mean, on the agenda that says click here for events, the schools are working to keep that updated. So you'll start seeing some of those concerts coming in or some of those productions coming in. So, and then we don't link we don't have the athletics on there because the athletic page lists all the athletic pieces. So, so that's that's the superintendent's report. Did you want to? So, um, I'll just do a quick yeah. update. We had a meeting Wednesday with probably twenty five folks. Sherry was there. Lauren was there. Elva was there. Um, it was a combination of folks from the law enforcement, from the corrections officers. We had DHHS present um, talking about community, well, just the, the concerns that are sort of flaring up in the community. Um, we, we, the original conversation actually began sort of around social media, um, but other things popped into where we were talking about all of the concerns that seem to be in our society today and how we're handling that. So of that group, um, we had about... Um, like 20 of them signed up to meet again um, in different capacities. So we have one group that's working specifically on like a community awareness forum, just talking about like helping parents navigate some of the, the computer issues, social media, phones, take, take your kid's phone, check it out, make sure, you know, those kind of things. Um, and then just different resources that they would like to be able to present to families in our community. So there's one group that's working on that. There's one group that's working strictly on the mentoring aspect of things um, because that came up multiple times with like, can we set up some mentoring programs? Jerry suggested some good folks in her community just and just just things that we can, how can we, how can we build like a, a relationships with some of our kids that are struggling or even those kids that aren't struggling, but with older folks that who might be interested in helping them. And then there's a specific group that was probably we called them the the task force um, for some of the more intense ten percent of kids that we're spending ninety percent of our time with, and that was um, all of the folks from law enforcement signed up, as did the corrections guys, as well as our guidance counselors and social work folks and some principals. So we've got about fifteen or twenty people working specifically on that one. Yeah. We're going to try to. Um, we're not gonna be able to solve the world's problems, but we're gonna try to talk about like, how can we work in our three communities to um, address some of the concerns that are that are forthcoming. And uh, so again, these are not um, easy problems to solve, but some of them are a little more easily addressed. And then this other group is a little bit harder, but so I'll, um, I sent out, I'll send out an update I didn't send it to all the board members. I sent it to the folks that attended the other day. Um, just the, the quick overview of it. And then I'll just keep you informed along the way. And if you want to jump onto a committee, feel free. So. I think one takeaway was that it's a small group of kids that are doing spend most of, your time. Spend most of the time yep. and that the social media does exacerbate it and that most of the behavior is occurring outside of school but there's some spillover. Sure. I, mean, yes. yeah, I think that's it, clear. Yes, yeah, cool. It spills over into school. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, and I think that um, the other thing, I, I think it's just good to know that we're all sort of working in the same direction, that there are, there are some families that are just really struggling and they're impacting, <laughs> you know, in a big way in not only in our school system, but also in our towns. So we just, 
you know, it is sort of a reflection of the world at large. So, uh, so we just try to be positive and think of good ways to address some of the issues. <clears throat> Can I ask a question about that? Sure. Um, really glad to hear um, that we're we're starting to key in on that that ninety percent who are doing a great job. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the reality. Nah. Uh, and I I recognize. I think we all recognize um, that as a society, as a school system, we've we've done a lot to say, okay, hey, these ten percent not being successful, how do we support them? But in some ways, we've we've done that as a consequence to the ninety percent who are who are doing well. Um, so I'm I'm really happy to hear it and excited to hear what's going to come out. You know, how do we how do we in a way and I, the, I'm, the right word is not coming to my mind, so I'll use the wrong word that I have in my mind. But how do we protect that 90 percent who are following the rules and doing what they need to do and provide them with all the opportunities without limiting them because of some really poor decision making based on 10 percent? So, um, yeah, I'm happy to hear you say that. And I'm excited to hear Will we hear like constant reporting as you guys meet yeah, going to be so. the intention. Our first um, task force. <laughs> that all of the all of the groups are going to meet prior to Christmas. So once I compile the information from that, then we'll I'll share that out. And then yeah, I think I think my guess is I'm not right now. I'm sort of heading up all three groups, and I'm going to pass it along to other people to like run the show with it. And then I'll be able to be the conduit of information. That's my goal. The question, you know, with Stakia working on the um, the website, this is this is a community thing. Yeah, this might be one of the things to get on the website in a prominent location. Yeah, because um, we are trying to inform and make aware yeah. the community of of the issues and how we in all the different ways and um, the associations within the community, organizations within the community are working together. I think that's a great message to put out to our community when they see our website. So, you want it? And, and I actually think that especially the community and parent awareness, you're talking about the other 90%, yeah. Yeah. there are parents that you know, will now be more aware. Yeah. And I think that's going to benefit Absolutely. all the students, yeah. Absolutely. especially that 90% yeah. is my take on that. Yeah, I think the community awareness piece is actually um, I mean, the, the most exciting, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because yeah. it really is about having conversations with all of our families about what they can do to sort of not alleviate, but like, you know, limit some of the, some of the interplay that's happening that doesn't need to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and, and really it's just raising awareness about understanding the technology that's in our kids' hands and what they can do with it. Um, because it doesn't, it's again, it, it, even on our laptops, it's not happening here. It's, but it's like, it's the phones are a big deal. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so having parents have some understanding of that and help with that would be good. Yeah, good stuff. Other? Um, PTO update on the serial drive that we mentioned last time. Um, the goal is to collect for the, among the district PTOs, I think around 140 boxes to go into Thanksgiving break. And then we were going to do another push to cover the backpack program for the rest of the breaks. Um, the PTOs in eight days um, due to the amazing pouring into from the communities um collected over 500 boxes <laughs> if not 600 um so all the breaks are covered we don't have to do another push and we were able to do the the domino effect of kindness um presentation with the cereal boxes at three of the schools i think see videos yes there are videos there are one or two yes those are fun That's yes awesome. <laughs> you put them in um and then I just thought it was awesome that we were invited, like just recap that we were invited as a board to walk in both the North Berwick and Berwick Parade. They were super fun and just like a cool different experience. That was nice. Um, and then the community newsletter was amazing. I quickly scrolled through it before the meeting. Um, I get it as a parent. Do Does the board get it? No, I didn't no, get it. I didn't get it. All right. Get Adam in. So can we add, like, are we making sure that it's going to all board, all, um, anyone with an msid60.org? email, I guess, in general. Is that uh, not going to like the MSAD 60 emails? Um, so what I what I do is for the community, like the, for families, I do it through school messenger. Mm -hmm. And then for uh, the MSAD 60 emails, I do like a uh, Gmail, Google, like send to all 
So it I should send to all of everyone with that address. But if it's not, then I'll go. No. So you guys aren't getting it? No, I can't. No. All right, so I'll figure it out. It has like, I mean, it had so much, like half the stuff I was going to say tonight, I was like, oh, it's in there already. Like, I don't need to show this. I suck. You already did this. Um, so it was awesome. The, um, I didn't know if it would be an opportunity slash I would love to see like district concert, like, you know, like this time of year is like concerts. So like just a list of like district concerts of, you know, who's, what's happening, where, when, all that kind of thing. Um, just for, in case people want to take advantage of other concerts and whatnot. Um, but yeah, it was, it was wonderful. Thank you for getting that out. It's awesome. Look at. Other public input. Uh, as far as loving and goes in the SRO, I think you ought to value. Life silver on this decision. Uh, because I am a vet and I do walk around arms sometimes, not tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Good trust. <laughs> I know where to put it. Uh, carry in church, protect the kids in church. If you have an incident in the school, you are veterans. I have a scanner. And I hear what the, the sheriffs are going through. And you really, in Lebanon, really need to consider this. Janet Mills has a surplus this year. She let slip out that it's $727 million of our taxpayer money. Somebody somewhere on a board can reach out and grab some money from her for this SRO. You get value of kids' life. That's why I come to these meetings. I want to address. Notice in the past that, yeah, being on the board can get aggravated. But I notice in the past that there isn't bullying. You, you guys, I'm not pointing any fingers. So I guess in the past, last meeting, I felt. John Q. Public here was being bullied by saying we can't ask questions. Well, I call the state. I found out we can't ask questions. We just can't expect answers at the meeting. Okay. That to me is a point. Okay. You have board members that are very smart that put forth things to you. And there's been several incidences that I've set in on, that I've watched polling. I realize, because I've been on boards, you get tired, you work all day, you get tired, and your tempers get short. But if we're going to stop bullying in school, it has to stop with the administration. Thank you. Name is Robert Matters. I'm not going to tell you my address, but I'm from Lebanon. Um, so, for those that may or may not be aware, recently the U.S. News and World Report came out with their rankings for the what for with their 2022-24 high school rankings for the nation and the state of Maine. I happened to look at them because I was I was a teacher once involved in education, and I like to see how the school that I graduated from Lebanon is doing. When I saw the rankings, I wasn't happy. In the state of Maine, we are ranked 47 out of 111 schools. That puts us at just above average. In that ranking, they cover um, how the students perform on state required tests, graduation rate, and how well schools are performing as far as getting students ready for college. I want to read to you the statistics that I found. So I'll start with our graduation rate. Noble High School graduates 94% of our students. Puts us well above the state average. 
Our science proficiency is at 56%. Our reading proficiency is at 54%. And our mathematics proficiency is at 34%. Putting that in perspective, our state averages are 50% in science and writing and 30% in math. So yes, Noble does exceed the state requirements. However, at best, our students at best, let me put this up. There it is. At best, fifty-six percent of our graduating students are not profit. Or not. I'm sorry. Let me try that again. Here it is. At best, thirty-eight percent of our students that are graduating from Noble High School are not proficient in science. Forty percent are not proficient in reading, and sixty percent are not proficient in math when they leave Noble High School. That is not a good thing. In my opinion, the state averages are not what we should be striving for. Because at the end of the day, and point of order, I'd like to have everyone pay attention to me, please. Thank you. You do have 30 seconds. Fair enough. I'll just conclude. In my experience in teaching and owning a tutoring business, I don't find that students just all of a sudden start struggling with these subjects in high school the moment they start high school. My guess is that the numbers at the elementary and middle school levels are similar or worse. I don't expect us to get 100% proficient in, in every subject. However, when three out of five students that graduate from Noble High School are not proficient in math, that makes me think something needs to change. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Public input? <clears throat> After what I told you folks tonight, I would expect that this principal of the middle school is going to hear about how we feel, what he did to my daughter in law and grandson. Uh, and they show emotion, but I to keep back anger. That should never have happened. She was so upset. She said, you better call the police department and see if that's right. I did. He said, he's not coming down there. He made it up. Just tell him how I feel about it. He's going to stop that habit. That's a bad habit. That's good. Real quick, um, Randy Berger from Lebanon. Um, I just wanted to take a minute to thank Suas and, and um, Sheriff um, King for um, just their uh, attention to detail and, and the thought and the time and effort that's gone into the POPs grant. And I really feel um, like last year I came here, I was really emotional about the topic of an SRO for specific reasons. Um, but um, I do appreciate the commitment and the time and effort you guys have put into that. And, um, you know, when you walk away from the meeting and you don't think that you are heard, you are being heard and they do listen and they have been following up. So thank you to everyone. And um, I really don't think that Eric King's presentation went into um, some of the better benefits or some of the things that have happened in our school district to improve safety. Um, and Gary, I know you mentioned Lebanon is heavily armed. I'm not heavily armed and I don't own a gun and they care of me. But um, that's not reassuring. I think rhetoric like that just sort of derails the, the, the pros of having an SRO um, because we can't rely on our citizens to, you know, activate and, and help out in, in those you know, emergency responses. It's great, but that's, as a parent, that doesn't bring me any reassurance to the school safety. But um, I, I wanted to point out that, like, the response time for York County to respond to Lebanon could be anywhere from 20 minutes to 45 minutes. And we've all seen across the nation what can happen in 10 minutes of shooter in the school building. So, I mean, any drive across a Lebanon town is 10, 15 minutes away. It's a lot can happen in that time. Um, but I do wanna also note that um, I, I had gone to Sheriff King last year um, and I asked him to do a threat assessment of Lebanon Elementary because they hadn't been in there um, after jurisdiction went from state police to York County. And he did that. Um, so I just, I passed off to Sheriff King. I find him to be a very reputable and honest 
hardworking man. Um, and they made adjustments to some of the things in the building to make it safer. So I think that although their presentation focused on the friendliness and the community building, there was like real safety threats in that building that that were taken care of because of their action. So I just want to point that out and on a positive note because there are a lot of people that are doing uh, great things. I don't know about your bullying situation, but in this situation, I feel like you guys really come to the table. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Other input? I think the SRO is a great thing. Um, my concerns are more as a taxpayer. I've been kind of watching for our district and some other local districts. We're already paying as taxpayers about 65% of our taxes towards the school district. So I want to say thank you to Susan for reaching out and whoever's looking to find me to assist us. assist this. I don't think more and more of this should be coming on the taxpayers. I think there needs to be other ways of planning funding or eliminate some other extracurricular activities that should not be brought on the taxpayers. I think the SRO is more important than maybe some other things I've been hearing about the tender needs meetings. So just everybody can keep those considerations. Thank you. Thank you. Other input? Next on the agenda is adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.